Hey, this is Ryan from Reality School. In this video, we'll go over how to store 3D models and thumbnail images in the cloud using Firebase Cloud Storage. When completed, our app will behave in the exact same way as before, but instead of bundling our assets with the app, we are now retrieving them from Cloud Storage. This is a much more scalable solution and gets our app one step closer to production readiness. This video covers several advanced topics, so please take your time and make sure you understand each step of the process. Before we get started, this is the hardware and software used in this video. If you're using anything older or newer, you might have to make some adjustments to your code. We have several action items for this video. First, we'll install the Firebase SDK with the Swift Package Manager. Second, we'll create a new Firebase project in the Firebase console. Next, we'll add Firebase initialization code to our Xcode project. After that, we'll enable anonymous authentication. Next, we'll create a Firestore database to store metadata for our 3D models. After that, we'll create a new collection in Firestore and add model metadata. Next, we'll refactor the code base to read model metadata from Firebase. After that, we'll upload USDZ models and image thumbnails to Firebase Cloud Storage. Next, we'll create a helper method to download thumbnails and USDZ models from Firebase Storage. And finally, we will refactor the model class to use thumbnails and USDZ models retrieved from Firebase Storage. So without further ado, let's get started. For the first action item, we'll install the Firebase SDK with the Swift Package Manager. Navigate to the Firebase documentation and follow the instructions for installing Firebase with the Swift Package Manager. The URL will be in the description below. We'll go to File, Swift Packages, and select Add Package Dependency. We'll enter in the URL for the Firebase GitHub repository. On the next screen, you'll see a list of Firebase products. We'll select Auth, Firestore, Firestore Swift Beta, Storage, and Storage Swift Beta. For the second action item, we'll create a new Firebase project in the Firebase console. Navigate to the console. Select Add Project. Enter in a project name. In this case, I'll add ARF. For this tutorial, we won't enable analytics. You are of course free to choose whether you want to enable analytics or not. Click on Create Project. Next, we'll follow additional instructions to configure Firebase for our iOS application. First, we'll register the app. Enter the bundle ID and click Register App. Next, download the config file. At the time of this recording, this config file is called Google Services Info.plist. We'll drag and drop the config file into the root of our Xcode project directory. We'll turn on copy items if needed and select all targets. We've already added the Firebase SDK to our project, so we can skip this step. The fourth step is to add initialization code. This initialization code should connect us to Firebase when the app starts up. However, these instructions are for UIKit based apps. Our app is using SwiftUI, so just ignore this step for now. Click Continue to Console. For the next action item, we'll add Firebase initialization code. We'll add the initialization code to our app's main entry point. This is equivalent to the app delegate in UIKit based apps. The first thing we'll do is import Firebase. The second thing we'll do is create an initializer for our struct and call firebaseapp.configure. We are now done configuring Firebase for our project. For the fourth action item, we'll enable anonymous authentication. To access 3D models from cloud storage, we'll need to authenticate the user. Firebase offers several ways to authenticate users, including Facebook and Google login, login with email and password, and also anonymous authentication. Anonymous authentication enables anonymous guest accounts in our application, which lets us enforce user-specific security and Firebase rules without requiring credentials from our users. Given that our users won't be writing user-specific data to Firebase, anonymous authentication works well. If at a later time we decide that we need to permanently authenticate users, we can convert an anonymous account to a permanent one. There are two steps to enable anonymous authentication. For the first step, we'll open up the authentication section in the Firebase console. Select Get Started. Enable anonymous authentication. For the second step, we'll enable anonymous authentication in our code. Again, in the main entry point of the app, right below where we called firebaseapp.configure, we'll add the authentication code. We'll get the auth object for the default Firebase app and call the signinanonymously method. 
This method has a completion handler that provides us with an authentication result object and an error object. Using a guard statement, we'll get the user object from our authentication result. If an error occurred, this user object will be nil and we'll print an error message to the console. If the user object is not nil, we will access the unique identifier and print a success message to the console. When we run the app, we can see a print message with the user's unique identifier. We can also view our user in the Firebase console. This completes the anonymous authentication action item. We can now move on to our next action item. We'll create a Firestore database to store metadata for our 3D models. We'll open up the Firestore database section in the Firebase console. Click on Create Database. We'll select Start in Production Mode. For the Cloud Firestore location, we'll accept the default suggestion of NAM5, which is in US Central. Keep in mind that once you've selected a location, it cannot be changed. If your app needs the best latency and network performance possible, be strategic about picking a location. Click Enable. For the next action item, we'll create a new collection in Firestore and add model metadata. To add metadata for our 3D models, we'll create a new collection. We'll call this collection Models. In order to create a Firestore collection, we need to add at least one document. Let's create our first model. We'll use Auto ID for Document ID. Our model document will have three fields, Name, Category, and Scale Compensation. We'll enter in data for our dining table model. We now have one model document in our models collection. Next, I'm going to add metadata for each model from our model.swift file in our project. You should of course do this for all your 3D assets as well. We are now done adding model metadata to our Firestore database. Before we move on to the next action item, let's update our database security rules. We'll comment out the default rules and add a new rule that allows the user to read documents only if they are authenticated. For the seventh action item, we'll refactor our code base to read model metadata from Firebase. In model.swift, make the following changes. Update the model category enumeration to use raw values of type string. Next, we'll update the model class to adopt the identifiable protocol. To conform to this protocol, we'll create an ID property and assign it a UUID string. Next, we'll completely remove the model struct. Next, we'll create a models view model class. To do so, create a new Swift file and call it models view model .swift. Import Firebase Firestore. Create a models view model class and give it a type of observable object. This class needs to be an observable object so that a Swift UI view can manage it as an observed object. Next, we'll create a published variable for our models array. We can initialize our array with an empty array. Next, we can initialize an instance of Cloud Firestore by creating a private DB constant. In this view model, we'll create a fetch data function to get our model data from Firestore. Instead of just getting the data once, we'll create a listener to monitor for any real-time changes in our data. We'll check to see if any documents are returned. If no documents are returned, print a message to the console and return. Next, we'll use the map function to map the Firestore data to our models array. For each document, we'll get the Firestore data. We'll extract the name, category text, and scale compensation data and assign them to constants. For category, we'll use the default enumeration initializer to create an enum value from the string data obtained from Firestore. Finally, we'll return a model with the name, category, and scale compensation passed into its constructor. Please note that the constructor expects a float for scale compensation, but Firestore returns a double. We'll convert the double value to a float. Our view model is now complete. Next, we'll make updates to browseview.swift. In the models by category grid struct, remove the models constant and create an observed object for our models view model.
In our if let statement, obtain the models from our view models and filter them by the current category. The filtered models array is then assigned to the models by category constant. We need some place to call our fetch data method. We can do that in the onAppear modifier for our vStack. There is one more thing left to do. Scroll down to our horizontal grid struct. In the for each loop, we'll add an ID parameter and use the object itself to uniquely identify each model. We need to add this ID parameter because Firestore provides us with a dynamic list of models, whereas we were previously using a statically defined models array. Run the app. The app should behave in exactly the same way as before we added Firebase. For the next action item, we'll upload USDZ models and image thumbnails to Firebase Cloud Storage. We'll open up the storage section in the Firebase console. Create a folder and call it Models and select it. Select Upload File and add all relevant USDZ files. Wait for all files to finish uploading. Go back to the root folder and create another folder. We'll call this one Thumbnails. Select the Thumbnails folder and upload all relevant thumbnail images. And finally, we'll update the security rules. We want the user to be able to read when authenticated. Write operations won't be allowed. For the ninth action item, we'll create a helper method to download thumbnails and USDZ models from Firebase Storage. Create a new Swift file and call it Firebase Storage Helper. Import Firebase. Create a new class and call it Firebase Storage Helper. Get a reference to the cloud storage service using the default Firebase app. For our helper method, we'll be using a type method, so we'll need to make our storage reference static. This way, the type method can access the property. Next, we'll create our helper method. Use the class keyword in front of the func keyword to define a helper method that is called on the Firebase storage helper type itself. Our method will be called async download to file system, and we'll take two parameters. The first parameter is the relative path of the asset we want to download. More on this later. The second parameter is a completion handler that will run once the asset has been stored on the local file system. This method will have four steps. The first step will be to create a local file system URL based on the relative path parameter. We'll get the URL for the documents directory and append the relative path. The relative path will look something like thumbnails forward slash dining chair dot png for thumbnail asset and models forward slash dining underscore chair dot usdz for 3D model asset. The second step will be to check if the asset is already in the local file system. If it is, we'll pass its URL to the completion handler and return. If the asset has not been downloaded before, we move on to the third step. For this step, we'll create a reference to the asset in Firebase Storage. For the final step, we'll download the asset to the local file system. If this write operation succeeds, we'll obtain the local URL and pass it on to the completion handler. Make sure to call resume on the write task. This completes everything we have to do for our Firebase storage helper. For the final action item, we'll refactor the model class to use thumbnails and USDZ models retrieved from Firebase Storage. The first thing we'll do is make our model class conform to observable object and add the published keyword to the thumbnail property. This will allow SwiftUI to automatically update the UI when the thumbnail image changes. To allow SwiftUI to monitor for any changes on the model object, we'll go into browseview.swift and make a quick modification to the item button struct. We'll change the model property in this struct to be an observed object and change it from a constant to a variable. Let's get back to our model.swift file. In our initializer, we'll assign a placeholder image with system name photo. At the bottom of the initializer, after all the properties have been initialized, we'll call our async download to file system type method. We'll pass in a relative path for the thumbnail and use string interpolation to fill in the respective name of the model.
Note that this relative bat corresponds to the naming convention in Firebase Storage and in our local file system. As mentioned before, the completion handler will pass in a local URL to the closure once the file has been downloaded. Inside this closure, we'll use a try-catch block to load an image data from a file. Once we have the image data, we'll create a UI image and assign it to the thumbnail property. Since the UI image constructor returns an optional, we'll provide a default value, which in this case will be the current value of the thumbnail property. If there's an error, we'll print a message to the console. This is all it takes to load the thumbnail image from file. The final step will be to remove the thumbnails folder in our assets folder. Next, we can work on loading the 3D model. Remove the file name constant. Call async download to file system again, and this time pass in a relative path for the USDZ models. Cut all the code from the load model async and paste it in the closure of async download to file system. Change load model async named to load model async contents of and pass in the local URL. Everything else in the model entity code should work as before. Before we wrap up, let's delete the 3D assets folder from the root directory of our project. Now that our assets are in the cloud, we no longer need to store them with the app bundle. We are now done with the code. Let's run the app to make sure everything works. Go to the browse view. You should see a placeholder image loading. And after just a second or two, all the thumbnails are loaded. When we tap on a model, we can place it in our scene just like before. A word of caution though. Currently, our user interface doesn't indicate when a 3D model has finished downloading and is ready to be placed. If you're using large 3D models, this can become a problem. As a challenge, I encourage you to create a loading state in your UI and provide the user with feedback on when a model is ready for placement. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and until the next time.